Released by Squaresoft in the year 1997 on the PlayStation, Final Fantasy Tactics would be a spin-off tactical strategy game creating the Evil East world setting used in other games like Final Fantasy XII and Vagrant Story. Written and directed by Osumi Matsuno, who helped create the Ogre Battle games, a dark story-rich tactical strategy series, he joined Square and basically made another tactics ogre game except with Final Fantasy themes. For characters, the game centers around the mercenary Ramza, though up to 24 more characters can be added to the army roster. For gameplay, battles are standard tactical turn-based fare on an isometric grid with characters earning levels at regular intervals, and there is a permadeath system in place for most characters. There are 22 available jobs for players to grow their characters within, and each character can be built from the primary, secondary, and passive abilities from the jobs they've leveled up in so far. In between main missions, side quests can be undertaken to occupy unused units, and equipment can be purchased and outfitted. Other than human units, select monsters and even chocobos can be usable units, and chocobos can also be used as mounts for other characters. In 2007, the game was ported to the PlayStation Portable with additional cutscenes and updated resolution, as well as a few updated guest characters, changes to names and translations, new classes, and the inclusion of multiplayer. Chronologically, War of the Lions takes place hundreds of years after Final Fantasy XII, when a massive cataclysm has destroyed technology, most all the other non-human races, and repurposed the espers. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with the recapitation. As the game begins, we see this tale is recounted by a student named Araslam, as he speaks of the famous War of the Lions and its war hero Delita. However, he brings up that common knowledge isn't the whole truth, and begins by introducing the nobleman forgotten by history, Ramza. A report hidden by the church until recently called the Darai Papers recounts a time period from a different perspective, in which Ramza is actually the true hero, though the church has officially branded Ramza a heretic. This new testimony brings to question what really happened during those times, and Araslam delves in deeper. The story begins recounting how the Kingdom of Ivalice suffered under a 50 years war, and one year after its defeat in the war, its king had died due to illness. With only his baby son as heir, stewarding the kingdom would naturally fall to his guardian, the queen's elder brother, Larg. However, fearing oppressive rule under the queen, the parliament ousted Larg and instead appointed the king's cousin, Prince Goltana, as the new guardian. Both princes were respected generals of the Fifty Years' War, as powerful nobles united under Goltana's Black Lion banner, and disenfranchised nobles and knights united under Larg's White Lion banner. Thus began the fight for succession, later named the Lion War. We now see the young knight Delita scouring the land until he finds the church where Princess Ovelia is hidden. Within, we see Ramza has abandoned his nobility and is now just a mercenary in the employ of protecting the princess. When enemies under the banner of the Black Lion come to attack, Ramza joins Ovelia's guard Agrius in fending them off. This is actually a distraction, as Delita sneaks around and kidnaps the princess. Giving chase, Ramza is shocked to recognize his childhood friend Delita and confused at what he's doing. He recalls that at the end of the Fifty Years' War, many knights and nobles lost their titles or ended up with no money, and so many turned to lives of crime or rebellion against the crown. At the time, Ramza and Delita were cadets in the military in the city of Garland under the Order of the Northern Sky. They were sent to help quell revolts in the kingdom from bands of brigands like the Corpse Brigade, and have earned praise from their battle victories. En route to their assignment of guarding the headquarters Duke Larg would be at, Castle Egros, they encounter some members of the Corpse Brigade and save one of their prisoners, another squire named Argath. Argath recognizes Ramza's family name, Beolf, and asks his house to help him also rescue his lord, Elmdor, from the Corpse Brigade. Taking Argath with them, they meet with Ramza's family, currently headed by his older brother, Dystarg, who also lends some aid, but this is not to Argath's satisfaction. Ramza and Delita meet their sisters, Almer and Titra, who are also taking refuge in the castle, though Delita's sister, Titra, is having a hard time fitting in because she and Delita are actually commoners here under special exception of Ramza's late father. Ramza's other older brother, Zalbog, is dealing with the ransom situation, but thinks there's more to this and drops information for Ramza and Delita to work off of. Entering the slums, they briefly spot the commander of the Corpse Brigade, Wegraf, but more Brigade members bar their pursuit. Finding the leader among them, Argath beats information out of him, while the man points out the selfishness that the aristocracy has forced them to these ends when they fight for equality. He also mentions the kidnapping wasn't Wegraf's plan, but a radical member of theirs named Gustav, who's out in the desert. In fact, Wegraf confronts Gustav, who doesn't believe in his revolution, and Ramza walks in as Wegraf slays Gustav himself. Wegraf explains the kidnapping wasn't him, but he will exchange Elmdor's life for his own escape, which Ramza and Delita agree to. While they rescue Elmdor, when they return, Dystarg scolds them for going off on their own, pointing out that they cannot punish lawbreakers if they themselves disregard the rules. 
At this time, Duke Lord comes in, willing to forgive in light of the impressive achievement, though behind closed doors, it really was they who were looking to knock off Elmdor, and him having his life saved puts them in a better position anyway. Roms is ordered to serve on the front lines of routing the Corpse Brigade, and Argath joins them, eager to see battle. They attack a hideout led by Wegraf's own sister, but Ramza stays his hand for killing her despite the cutthroat nature of both her and Argath for her death. She limps away, swearing revenge as Argath disapproves of Ramza's mercy. Meanwhile, the Corpse Brigade attacks Igros castle, stealing away Titra and nearly stealing Alma. Dice Dark orders a full search for the Corpse Brigade's garrison, and promises to stay their assault until Titra is safely returned. Delita is outraged at his sister's abduction, fueled more by Argath's disapproval of delaying their victory on the life of a single commoner. Argath also tries to convince Ramza to embrace his nobility and stop treating lower-born commoners like Delita like a friend. Delita storms off, and Ramza dismisses Argath from his service, though Argath says he'll just join Zalbog in the assault of the brigade's hideout. Ramza meets with Delita, who is still frustrated and hates how his efforts won't be rewarded just because of his status. As they join the assault on the brigade's base, they run into Wegraf's sister again, who refuses to surrender Titra even if she is a commoner, and they strike her down for good this time. Meanwhile, Regraf is upset that once again one of his own is sullying the revolution with underhanded tactics like kidnapping, but his words fall on deaf ears as his men refuse to leave Teacher behind. As Ramza and crew approach where they took Teacher, Wegraf comes out, stating he'll release the girl, but will get revenge for them slaying his own sister. As they drive him off, he also reveals to Ramza that Gustav was under orders of Dystarg as part of his plot to consolidate power under Duke Larg, so the villains are his own house, not the rebellion. He tells Ramza to look at both his brother's actions very closely for proof and leaves. As they lose Wegraft and see Titra still missing, they think to move quickly to the assault on the brigade's base. At this time, the kidnapper still uses Titra as a hostage to fend off the assaulting knights and lets them know their base is also storing a large amount of explosive powder. As Ramza and Delita just arrive, they see an unconcerned Zalbog order Argath to shoot anyway, and Argath chooses to shoot Titra first, killing her, and quickly follows up to shoot the kidnapper too, wounding him. Leaving this front for another, Zalbag leaves Argath in charge, and Ramza is stunned as he sees his brothers really didn't plan on keeping their word. Delita is enraged and calls out Argath, who is happy to rise to the challenge. Ramza then joins Delita to punish Argath, who questions why Ramza would betray his own house. As the squires clash over their ideals, Argath is struck down. Delita then moves to the body of his sister, and as Ramza moves to comfort his friend, the brigand from before lights the powder within the tower, detonating everything, and Ramza watches as he loses his best friend. Coming back to the present, Agrias, the princess's bodyguard, moves to pursue the abductor, and Ramza volunteers to come along as he feels compelled to confirm the identity of the man as Delita. Following their trail, Agrias has a hunch where the captors fled to. Catching up to them, they see their abductor protecting Princess Avelia from the Northern Sky Knights, claiming the knights wish to kill the princess. Seeing the group, the knights who employed the man in charge of the mercenaries, Gafgarian, order him to now kill everyone, exposing that he was paid to allow the kidnapping and then kill the person who did it, as Princess Ovelia is considered an obstacle to the throne to those who do not wish for her to claim it. Recognizing Ramza, Delita calls out that this plot has Dice Dark's touch all over it. Seeing flashbacks of Titra again, Ramza disobeys Gafgarian's command and joins his friend Delita. Defeating the knights and labeling himself an enemy to his old order, Ramza asks Delita what his aim is. Delita reveals he's on neither Larg's nor Goltana's side, and is instead doing something else. But for now, he'll allow Ramza to take care of Ovelia as he walks away from the thanks of Ovelia and Ramza. Ramza wonders where they can go since they have no allies in this war, and Agrius suggests going to the neutral power of the Church of Globados and seek the help of Cardinal Delacroix. Elsewhere, we see a young man named Mostadio being hunted down for the magical stone named Orisite he carries with him. Saving him, Mustadio explains he's being hunted by the Bart Training Company, who's quite prominent, but it's a front for their organized crime. It also turns out Mustadio also seeks out Cardinal Delacroix, who's an old war hero from the Fifty Years' War, and needs him to save his father. Elsewhere, we see Dystarg indeed giving the command to Gafgarian to capture the princess and kill everyone else, including Ramza if need be. Regardless, he isn't worried about their endeavor to seek sanctuary under the church, but is concerned about this new third party interfering with his plans. When the group meets with the Cardinal, the Cardinal agrees to shelter the Princess and send forces to help Mustadio get rid of his pursuers in the Bart Training Company. He suspects to know why they chase him and produces a small crystal of his own. They review the legend of the Zodiac Braves, twelve heroes who came forward to oppose a demon race called Lukavi and free Ivalice. Each of them bore an Oresite crystal bearing the mark of a Zodiac sign. In fact, the patron saint of the church, Saint Ajora, was one of the twelve Braves, and the stones can still be used to summon their power. 
Usadio reveals that ancient machinery buried deep can be activated by Orosite, and Ludovic Bart seeks to harness the power and make a fearsome weapon. Knowing this and seeing the princess off safely, Ramza now leaves with Musadio for the clockwork city of Gog to prevent Ludovic from realizing his plot. When they arrive in Gog, Musadio notes it's awfully suspicious, there are no signs of Bart's men, nor are the forces the Cardinal promised to send. They split up to investigate, but Musadio gets captured by Ludovic himself, who wishes to exchange him for the Orosite. When Musadio's father is now brought out as a hostage, Musadio cracks and reveals where he hid it. Ramza is forced to make the exchange and Ludovic is pleased, letting slip he's been collecting these for the Cardinal himself. Realizing it played into the Cardinal's hand, they fight out of the trap, also freeing Mustadio's father. While the Cardinal's treachery is concerning, Mustadio smirks and reveals he had the real stone on him the whole time, and they only surrendered a convincing fake he prepared earlier. However, now Ovelia and Agrius are in danger, as when the Cardinal realizes the fake, he will ransom them for the real thing. Ramza conjectures that the Cardinal is planning to use the Church's image as well as the Legend of the Braves to end the war, and use the power of the Orosite to secure his rule over even the crown. Mustadio agrees and points out that the roads will be blockaded against them, so they must travel forward by ship. In the dockyards, Ramza is surprised to run into the Delita again, who says he has ears everywhere. He asks Ramza to return to Igros and not get any more involved with the Princess or the Stones. He points out Ramza cannot save the princess and would only endanger her more, but he can, as he will still oppose the mighty forces moving along the dukes, Ramza's brother, and even the cardinal. Back with the cardinal, he indeed intends to use the princess as ransom, and Gafgarian is there to lend aid in setting the trap for Ramza and Mustadio. Afterwards, the unforgiving cardinal personally killed Ludovic for his continued failure. With the betrayal, Agrius has already begun to flee, chased by the Cardinal's Griffin Knights, but Ramza arrives in time to help protect her, as she explains the Cardinal's working with Duke Lark. She escaped with the Princess, but they recaptured Ovelia and soon moved to execute her. At the same time, Delita is working with the Cardinal, though he's urging her to live, when a man comes in to make the bold revelation that Ovelia is not even the real one. He explains that the real Princess Ovelia died as a baby, and she was a double placed there for those who opposed the Queen, hoping one day she would replace her. This was why the Queen's first two sons were killed, to secure her route to the throne. However, the Queen having another baby was unforeseen. All in all, they just want her to go along with them and be the Princess, as if she went with Duke Larg, he would have her hanged. Before leaving her to think about joining them, they stress they are on neither Duke Larg's nor Goltana's side. We now see the Church's men find Wegraf, former commander of the Corpse Brigade and now current fugitive. They explain their mutual goal of creating a new Ivalice free of the reins of the current nobility, and Wegraf takes their offer. Back with Ramza, he's fallen into Gafgarian's trap, and fighting out, he's forced to strike down his former commander. Meanwhile, Delita takes Ovelia to the Order of the Southern Sky, defending her along the way, and asking her to make a choice for herself whether to wait for fate to claim her, or take his hand and live. Faced with little choice, she agrees to go with him. Back with Ramza, he now confronts the Cardinal, who mocks his efforts, exclaiming Ramza has truly nowhere to go now that he's turned his back to the crowd and against his house. He offers him the chance to join him like the princess has, believing the stones to give him the power he needs to change the world. Proving this, he takes out the Orosite and activates it, turning himself into the host for a mighty demon. Shocked at this turnabout, Ramza is forced to kill this abomination, now seeing the artifacts for something far more foul. At this time, Delita makes it back to Duke Goltana, offering the princess to gain favor, but also sowing discord in his court, and spurring him to oppose the prince's claim to the throne. Moving to attack the royal capital of Salia, Duke Gotana would banish the queen and crown princess Ovelia as the new queen. In response, Duke Larg would crown the child prince as the true heir and declare himself regent, freeing the queen. Larg's Order of the Northern Sky would march against Gotana's Order of the Southern Sky in Lasalia, thus sparking the War of the Lions. As time passes and both sides suffer heavy casualties, tired citizenry, and depleted economies, one of Gotana's commanders, Count Sid, bids for peace, but is firmly turned away by his peers who wish to stay the course, regardless of the suffering of their people and armies. At this time, Ramza seeks to tell his brothers how there is another force at play here, dictating the war. Along the way, he saves a man named Orin Durai, who recognizes Ramza's name, but their meeting is brief as they move on different paths for now. Arriving in Lasalia, Ramza meets his brother Zalbog, and tries unsuccessfully to convince him there is another greater power guiding the war, but Zalbog hears none of it. As Ramza then turns to leave, he is stopped by Alma. He tells her Delita not only lives, but is the one who kidnapped the princess. He also quietly reveals Dystarg was the one who arranged the princess's kidnapping, and worries that Delita is siding with even more dangerous men. 
At this time, Inquisitors arrive for Ramza, wishing to bring him in on charges of killing the Cardinal and suspicion of heresy, and warning him that resistance is admittance of guilt and he will be executed as a heretic. Ramza doesn't trust them for a second, and thus makes a public enemy of the Church. After fighting to protect Alma, he wonders if the Church is the one supporting Delita and is aware of the Orosite. Alma claims to have also seen Orosite somewhere, but now wishes to join Ramza, as she too will be branded a heretic after this incursion, and they both know Dice Dark would not protect her against his own reputation or the Church's. Forced to take her with him, they travel to where she saw the Orosite, her old schooling monastery, where they see the Church's men ransacking the place. The elder monk there explains the church has set Duke Larg's Angle Tana's forces against one another so they can whittle down their military might and the people's faith in the crown, while the church collects all the zodiac stones to raise their own might. As Ramza battles to claim the stone from the hands of the church, they seize his sister, as this division is headed by Wegraf himself, who also flees with the stone. A messenger then tells Ramza where he can find them, but to also bring the scriptures of Germanique with him. The Scriptures of Germanique are a biography of Saint Dejora by his disciple, Germanique, that has been disavowed by the Church. According to common knowledge, Germanique betrayed Ajora to an empire at the time, but this book accounts for everything differently from how things were taught. Ajora was not a divine child of God, but instead a normal man born in evil is his olden age of technology. According to common knowledge, Ajora was revered since birth after foreseeing a disaster that came true. In this era, there was a king who wished to unite all of Ivalice and turned to even dark magic to accomplish this. He summoned a demon to do his bidding, but the demon instead laid waste to the world. Ajora gathered the twelve zodiac stones and defeated this demon, but despite this victory, the dominant church at the time feared Ajora's growing influence and paid off his disciple Germanique to betray Ajora and lead to his capture and execution. However, in the scriptures here, Ajora was described as a normal man who was a revolutionary who also founded his own religion that annoyed the then dominant empire. He was a spy and a saboteur, and Germanique was just an agent hired to infiltrate Ajora's ranks and aid in his arrest. Ajora did indeed stumble upon some zodiac stones, but his intention with them was unknown, and there was no struggle against a demon to mention. When he was caught and killed, a part of the Empire City happened to fall into the sea on the same day, thus leading to the rumor Ajora was a son of God. Making a divine martyr of him, the church under him confiscated these scriptures for fear it would expose the truth of Ajora. Elsewhere, we see Ovelia begin to believe the story that she is a false double, as it would explain why she's been kept away all her life. Delita sympathizes with her, revealing he too was put in a role higher than his birth and was made to be someone else's tool, which is why he announces his intention of burning down the existing kingdom and building a new one with Ovelia as queen, where the corruption can be rooted out. With this, and after saving her life from more assassins, Ovelia begins to warm up to Delita. Elsewhere, Ramza runs into others tossed aside in the wake of the war, including desperate men after his head simply because they have no other means to get by. He runs into Orin again, who turns out to be Count Sid's adopted son, and thus with the Order of the Southern Sky, but given how Ramza's late father trusted Count Sid, Ramza trusts Orin to pass along to Sid the notion that there are men manipulating both dukes into war, and they are the ones who are the real enemy. Orin believes Ramza's stories and intentions and tells him to consider him an ally. En route to rescuing Alma, Ramza runs into the messenger from before, named Marak, arguing with his sister Rafa, who urges them both to flee from Grand Duke Barrington. Barrington eyes the throne of Ivalice himself, and meanwhile has been leading development of armaments and training mages and assassins. After Ramza saves Rafa, she explains Barrington has been exploiting both her and her brother for their unique magic, as he previously had burned down their village, killed their family, and even raped Rafa personally. Still, Ramza is warned by Marak not to delay any longer, else Alma's life be forfeit. Elsewhere within Barrington's keep, he meets with the leader of the Knights Templar, Fulmarv, who was the one who told Ovelia she was really a double. Barrington recognizes the Knights Templar as the most powerful force in Ivalice thanks to the Zodiac Stones, even more than Duke Larg or Goldhana, and seek that they join forces to rule Ivalice together. He reveals that he already has two of the stones himself, thanks to Fulmarv's own son, who was raiding the monastery with Wegraf earlier. They are then interrupted when Ramza arrives, so Wegraf and Marak move to intercept as Fulmarf ends the discussion, declaring he'll simply kill Barrington for knowing too much of the stones and the scriptures of Germanique as he wields a stone of his own. As Ramza wins entry into the castle, he sees all the guards within slaughtered and Wegraf before him. They duel and Ramza wins the exchange, forcing Wegraf to pull back and reveal he also wields a zodiac stone, transforming himself into a demon and summoning more demons to his side. Destroying then, Ramza claims Wee grabs the stone and hurries to save Alma. Alma actually walks into a room where Fulmarv has butchered everyone, even severely wounding his own son. The son realizes Ramza was right about the stones and the Lukavi, and tells her to get the Orosite he had on him to Ramza. 
She complies as he dies before her, but Alfomar enters and moves to kill her. However, his Virgo Stone suddenly reacts to Alma and he pauses, pleasantly surprised, and instead seeks to spare her life and steal her away. With his battle now taken to the roof, Barrington is confronted by Rafa, who admits his crimes to her, overheard by Morak, who takes the bullet meant for his sister. He demands a stone off Morak's body, but suddenly a female assassin comes from behind and hurls Barrington off the roof to his death. And now Lord Elmdor, who Ramza helped save years ago, enters, asking for the stone. Ramza recalls hearing Elmdor died in battle some time ago, and suspects they are not human, and succeeds in fending them off. As the sun rises on a terrible night for Barrington Keep, Rafa hears a stone in Morak sympathize with her and chooses to use it, despite the warning of Ramza. To his surprise, Rafa doesn't turn into a demon, and instead a holy light comes down and restores Morak to life, forcing Ramza to wonder if the stones reflect the heart of the user. Grateful, both siblings join Ramza's forces, and within, Ramza finds the Orosite Alma just dropped. In the bigger picture, the War of the Lions has now reached the point where both sides are so weakened they cannot keep rule of Ivalice even if they won. Ramza notes it's strange how some of the Church and Knights Templar know the use of the stones, but many do not, and wonders if there is yet another influence manipulating even the Church. He now seeks to go to Zeltenia where Delita is, and hopes he will help shed light on Fulmarv and what he wants. Delita is indeed in Zeltenia, and Ramza asks him directly why the Church planted him and Goltana's men, and Delita is fine with revealing he is to assassinate Duke Goltana and Count Sid. As the war drags on, the people grow more tired of the leaders of each side. When the heads of both sides and their closest allies are cut off, like Ramza's brothers, the fighting will stop and everyone will be so weak as to be forced to accept whatever terms of peace the church offers. Possession of the Zodiac Stones will only solidify their position, but there is one person blocking them in that regard, Ramza himself. Delita claims he's also on no one's side but his own, though that means he would not hesitate to kill Ramza if the time was ever right. Since it isn't the time right now, Delita doesn't consider Ramza an enemy, and Ramza asks again if they can bring peace together. Delita turns down the offer, though still aids Ramza in killing another Inquisitor that shows up to take him down. Their business done, Ramza now moves to speak with Count Sid, as he has hard evidence against the Church that can persuade the famed warrior to his side. However, Sid is now under scrutiny as the Church itself claims he is plotting against the Duke. Sid is in disbelief that his decades of loyal service are turned over so easily without proof, as Gotana dismisses and arrests him, and instead brings in Delita to be promoted to Knight Devout and commander of the entire Order of the Southern Sky. Meanwhile, as both orders prepare for a final clash, the Church has trapped their battlefield with a debilitating but non-lethal Mox Fungus poison. Duke Larg is staggered like his troops, and Dystar takes this opportunity to slay him in cold blood right in front of Zalbog, who is shocked to also hear Dystar is the one who killed their father to gain control of their house, and now seizes control of the Order of the Northern Sky. Ramza infiltrates the fort Sid is being held at and meets Orin again as they free his father. Ramza also takes the time to prevent the battle between both orders from continuing by opening up a nearby sluice gate and flooding the battlefield. Now freed, Sid recognizes Ramza from when he was a child, as his father and himself go way back. Needing no convincing from Ramza that the Church is plotting against them all, he joins Ramza's forces to confront the Church, while Orin is sent to rescue Princess Ovelia. At this time, Delita makes his move, using the trust of Goltana against him to kill him, and sets up a volunteer fake Sid to be killed at the same time, knowing that the real Sid has escaped with Ramza. With both Dukes dead per plan, the Church then proceeds with the next step and attempts to offer peace. However, both sides are surprisingly not in the mood to wage peace just yet, as Ramza now makes to Limbury to rescue Alma. The Church sends a Knight Templar to speak with Dystarg about pursuing peace now, and Dystarg refuses, despite the Church reminding him that they helped his assassination plot to begin with. The Templar also drops they are aware of the knowledge Dystarg has of poisons, and relates this use of Moss Fungus to the exact same way Dystarg's father died, conveniently enough, noting victims of the Moss Fungus sprout toadstools above their grave. Regardless, on behalf of the Church, they gift him a Zodiac Stone, though unknown to them, Zalbog is listening outside, no longer trusting of his brother. Arriving in Limberry, Ramza walks into an ambush left by the Lady Assassins of Elmdor, who also bring forth demons. Within, Elmdor is with Fulmarv, mentioning how the stones choose their hosts, but a few are already slain. They also discuss how a host has been found for the High Seraph, but stop as Ramza approaches, and Elmdor opts to stop him on his own as Ramza seeks his sister. Elmdor explains Alma isn't here and instead uses a Zodiac Stone to turn into yet another powerful demon that Ramza is forced to deal with and overcome. It bothers Ramza why the true masterminds behind this have not played their hand with the immense power they already wield, but it's confirmed Fulmarv is the one he seeks for answers, and worse yet, he learns he gave a stone to Dystarg. 
Elsewhere, we see an injured Orin infiltrate the southern sky and inform Ovelia to lead a murder Goltana as part of a plot by the church. Delita comes in, sending Ovelia away, who instead listens in from hiding as Delita spares Orin and instead reveals his plan to topple both orders and even the church and make all of Ivalice level, using everyone as a tool to build his legend. Elsewhere, Zalbad confirms Moss Fungus Toadstool grows in his father's corpse, which confirms Dice Dark has played everyone for fools. Ramza hurries home to Igro's castle, right as Zalbog confronts Dystark and his long-standing list of murders and lies, topped by killing their own father. Dystark justifies his thirst for power, claiming it was best for House Beowulf, though, as soon as they strike him down, his Aurasite activates, turning him into the host for another Lukavi demon. He turns to Zalbog and kills him on the spot, and in return, Ramza overpowers and kills the demon, ending House Beowulf, noting that men are the sum of their deeds, not their name. As he continues his journey, he collects allies both new and old, like Muso, Balthier, and Cloud, and now has the majority of the Zodiac Stones in his possession. Knowing this, Fulmarv assembles the Templars and has them revolt against the church. They capture the High Confessor running the church and have him reveal the location of the Necrohall. He tells them the location, but also says they need the scriptures of Germanique to break the seal on it. Frustrated, Fulmarv knows he has to find Ramza now, as he has not only most of the stones, but the scriptures too, and leaves as his men backstab the head of the church. Ramza marches right to Fulmarv's doorstep and confronts him directly, wherein Fulmarv offers to release Alma for the scriptures and stones, but Ramza offers only the scriptures until he sees Alma first. Taking the scriptures, Fulmarv escapes instead, and in pursuit, Ramza finds a wounded High Confessor who shares where the Templars are heading before dying to his wounds. Before leaving for the Necro Hall themselves, Agrius visits Ovelia one last time, ensuring her safety and giving her a dagger to serve as some protection, should she need it. Journeying into the Necro Hall, Ramza's forces contest and defeat waves of Templars, until one of them breaks a seal leading back, leaving them no way to go but forward. Making their way through the hellish landscape, they find an airship graveyard and Fulmarv within, frustrated that the demon within Virgo will not awaken and possess Alma, and realizes it's because not enough people have died. As it turns out, the real purpose of the war was to generate enough death as tribute needed to summon his master, the Angel of Blood, and they need more yet. Using his own stone, Fulmar reveals a true Lukavi possessing him and seeks to destroy Ramza once and for all, but Ramza edges out a win yet again. Not settling for defeat, the demon sacrifices himself as tribute to awaken the Angel of Blood, and immediately Alma awakens as the legendary Saint Tejora. However, the possession is weak, as Alma is still able to fight for her own body, and the two are literally divided. Ajora now transforms into Ultima, the High Seraph, whom the original Ajora hosted ages ago. As Ramza and a small force of revolutionaries clash against the leader of Lukavi and its ascended form, they succeed in destroying the demon that would claim Ivalice. Defined to the end, the power of Ultima explodes, destroying everything around them and catching Ramza and his crew in the blast. As the game ends, a strife-ridden Ivalice is without leaders in war now, as we now see a funeral be held for Alma at the last of the Beowulf House. Ramza, a denounced heretic, would be denied any such service, even though his body was never found, but the service is attended by his friend Orin. He explains to the grave that Delita has wed Ovelia, and despite being commonborn, is now a king, and a hero who is restoring peace and stability to Ivalice. Despite his tactics of manipulating everyone, Orin believes in some way Delita may have been the purest hearted of them all. Just as he turns his back, wondering if Ramza and all truly died, he is shocked to see Ramza and Alma alive and well, casually riding past their own funeral. We now see King Delita bring flowers to Avelia for her birthday, but Avelia quickly brandishes the dagger Agrius gave her and stabs him, accusing him of using and casting aside absolutely everyone, even Ramza, and certain he will do the same to her. Immediately, Delita pulls out the dagger and stabs Avelia, killing her, and staggers away. His thoughts now turn to Ramza, wondering which one of them got the ending they wanted, as he would survive this wound to lead Ivalice to a long era of peace and become legend, while Ramza would travel to lands beyond and be forgotten by history. Orin would go on to chronicle all events of Ramza and his role in the war as the arguable true hero, and present his report called the Durai Papers to the church that was in the middle of deciding its new leader. However, history repeats itself, as like Germanique, his report would be confiscated, Orin himself would be branded a heretic, and he was burned at the stake for fear of spreading the truth. We now turn to years later, when Orin's descendant, Araslam, is the one recounting this tale, now understanding the truth of the Zodiac Braves and the War of the Lions. Final Fantasy Tactics has enjoyed the success of selling over 3.5 million copies worldwide.